Hi, Larry WD0AKX. In this video, I'm going to take you over the operation of a Drake 2C receiver. Now, these were made in uh, about 1966 67, right in there, and a triple conversion receiver. They're a very good receiver. There's still a lot of them out there, and uh, some uh, show up on eBay once in a while and other sites. If you're lucky enough to own one of these receivers, uh, they uh, work very well, so I'm going to take you over the operation. If you are kind of new to radio or something, this video will be for you. Uh, if you've been in uh, ham radio a long time, this probably won't mean a whole lot to you. But uh, mainly if you uh, are kind of interested in the 2C here, we'll take you over the operation. Now it did have a matching transmitter called the 2NT. I believe that stood for novice transmitter. Back at the time, uh, novices were only allowed 75 watts of power and a crystal controlled transmitter and this fit the bill. Made a nice package. But for now, and maybe more about that in a future video, the transmitter, but for now let's just take a look at the receiver. As you can see, the whole package makes a very nice looking station. So first we have our function switch and that's where you turn this radio on. There's off, standby, and then on. Standby uh, uh, just mutes the audio and keeps the tubes warmed up. And on is fully functional. There is an external uh, mute here. And what that is for is if you're using an external transmitter, you can tie that in to this receiver. And you can use the muting from the transmitter to mute the receiver so that it's quiet when you're transmitting. And there is a noise blanker option. That's NB here. That is an option. And the calibrate, 100 hertz calibrator, is also an option. I don't have either option installed in this radio. So then we'll go down to the band selector switch and that's where you want to start once you have the radio powered up and this does cover 80, uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, part of 10 meters. It does not cover 160 meters or the newer work bands. Now if you're a new ham, generally speaking the lower frequencies, the lower bands here are better in the evening hours, or hours of darkness, and then the upper bands, upper frequencies, are usually a little better uh, in daytime hours. That's not always the case, but it's kind of a general rule of thumb. So for now, it's uh, late in the afternoon, I'm going to select 14 megahertz, which is the 20 meter ham band, and we're going to tune around for signals so we can come over to the AF gain control. Basically what that is is the volume control. And you can hear a station there talking now. And on 20 meters we want to be in the upper sideband mode to receive sideband signals. Or we could be in AM to receive any AM stations. Also you can receive CW or Morse code stations using either upper sideband or lower sideband. I'll show you that a little later. And uh, for sideband mode, we want to be in the 2.4 position here on the bandwidth setting. This selects the bandwidth of the receiver, narrow or wide. And during quiet conditions in the daytime, a lot of times I like to uh, open it up to the 4.8 position here to widen the bandwidth. And, uh, and sometimes the audio sounds just a little bit nicer that way, especially if the sideband signal is running a little bit wider bandwidth. Some operators use ESSB mode, which is a wider bandwidth, and in this 4.8 kilohertz uh, position, uh, some of those signals sound very nice, especially uh, with a nice speaker connected to the radio here. If there's a lot of nearby interference, or QRM, then you do want to go to the narrower position here. And in CW mode, you can even go down the very narrow position if there's a lot of interference nearby. Now what you need to do also when you change bands, you want to come up to the pre-selector here and you want to peak the yes S-meter for the maximum reading on the signals and maximum sound level, noise. You'll hear that. And it's generally labeled here um, but you do want to 
go by the S meter reading to peak your signal with the preselector, and then it will be set up for the band you're on. And if you go from one side of the band to the other, you might want to retweak the preselector. That's what that is for. Now we'll take a look at the control on the right here. That's the AVC or automatic volume control. Normally in sideband mode, receiving sideband and AM signals, you want to keep that in slow. If you have it in fast, you'll hear a lot more noise in between um, the voice peaks. So by putting it in slow, it has a much smoother operation and uh, you won't hear quite as much harsh noise and usually uh, you don't need to turn it off but sometimes if you're operating uh, CW you may want to use the fast position or off and then use your RF gain control as a volume control. Now, the RF gain control is an important control I know a lot of operators they see they just leave it fully clockwise at all times and use the volume but uh, where the RF gain really shines is on noisy band conditions uh, such as 75 or 80 meters in the evening time especially when you have a lot of those static crashes in that then uh, I pretty much use my RF gain uh, most of the time on my radios as a volume control and what you need to do there is uh, turn your volume control actually almost fully clockwise or three-quarter something like that and then just use your RF gain control as your volume control and you'll see uh, once you kind of get used to doing that you'll see how it really improves uh, the noise level for you and uh, much easier on the ears once you get used to doing it that way uh, in the daytime on the more quiet bands here it's not so important but it really makes a difference it really shines on the noisy evening bands so you want to experiment with that a little bit. Once you get used to using your RF gain, uh, you'll have your hand on that more than you will on the volume control. Now what the RF gain control does basically is decrease the sensitivity of your radio. And when the band conditions are real noisy, a lot of static crashes and that, uh, you don't need to hear all that noise in the background. So you can decrease the RF gain until the noise is... Uh, at a listenable level while any of the stronger signals that are above the noise level will still be heard loud and clear. Now sometimes when using the RF gain control you may want to go to the fast AVC setting with the automatic volume control when you're just using the RF gain as a volume control but that's something you can kind of play with and use your ears to determine what sounds the best with your radio. And then of course this is our main tuning dial And I'll show you how to read the dial on this radio. You'll notice on the band switch here, right now I'm on 14.0, 14, .0, 14 megahertz or the 20 meter band. You'll see on some of the bands here are highlighted in white and some in red, the outer ones here. And that corresponds to the black part of the scale here or the red uh, numbers. Right now in 14, I will be adding the digits on top to 14.0. So right now I'm at 14.300 and tune down to 14.200. If I switch to the 80 meter band, 3.5 is what it says here on the band select switch in red, I'll add the bottom scale to 3.5. So Right now I'm at 3.5 plus 0.3, so I'm at 3.8 megahertz, and that would be 3.9 megahertz. I'm at the 0.400 there, so that's kind of how you read the scale. And also with the mode selector, there also the sideband modes are highlighted in white or red. So depending on the band you're on, in which scale you're using here, you will want to also use the corresponding upper or lower sideband indication here on the mode selection. Also, you'll notice the preselector also uses the red colors for the red bands. Now, on the function switch here, you'll notice the CAL, that's the calibrate position, to calibrate the dial if you have the optional crystal calibrator, 100, 
uh, kilohertz calibrator. I'll show you in a little while uh, how to determine if you have the option or not. Otherwise you can try switching to the calibrate position here and you should hear a uh, signal every 100 kilohertz on the dial here. And the way you would adjust the dial is to uh, turn the calibrator on and zero beat it to the nearest 100 kilohertz position. Now notice the switch, or it's not a switch, but it's a slider here near the meter. What that does is to slide the position of this little red indicator, and you would want to slide that and line it up with the zero beat on the nearest 100 kilohertz position and then your dial would be accurate. Now without that option uh, you can still use some on-the-air signals to determine your frequency and this will adjust the pointer and usually it's fairly close anyhow but uh, if you need to adjust it that's what this is for. Okay I went down to 40 meters right now, the 7 megahertz position and we're listening to a little bit of CW, Morse code. Just going to show you how it works here. On this radio, since it doesn't have a CW position, you can use either the upper or lower sideband mode. Depending on the interference on either side, one might work better than the other. Right now I'm on the wide position here. I'm on the sideband more narrow position. And now, you can hear I really narrowed it up so all the interference on either side of the CW signal is pretty much gone with this 400 hertz filter. 4 position. Now I should also mention too if you're not familiar with it on the lower sideband and upper sideband modes when you're in sideband uh, listening to signals generally anything below 10 megahertz is in lower sideband mode and anything above that is in upper sideband mode that's another general rule I guess so on the lower two bands here I would usually be in lower sideband mode to hear uh, sideband signals and 14, 21, and 28.5 megahertz, I would be in upper sideband. Uh, sometimes that's not always the case, but that's uh, another general rule, like I say. And in AM mode, there are certain uh, frequency ranges, uh, AM windows they're called on each band, where AM operators tend to hang out, and the sideband operators kind of leave them alone and let them have their window to operate AM mode. Now here's an AM signal on 80 meters or 75 meters. You'll notice how I can peak the preselector. I am at 38.85 kilohertz here, or 3.885. You'll see the dial. And that's within the AM window on 75 meters. Here's how I use the RF gain. Well, don't bite off more than you can chew, feller. Kind of puts the noise right in the background and the voices up front. I know Mike, he's going to go take a test tomorrow, but I just ain't ready yet. Now you're in. I'll admit it. I know a lot of people have been watching fires under me. There's the RF gain fully clockwise, and you can hear a lot more noise in the background. You can see an improvement. We'll take a quick look at the rear side of the radio. Starting over here, this is the S meter zero adjust control. You can tweak this so that your S meter reads a zero with uh, your antenna disconnected or no noise level, and that will calibrate the S meter for you. Real simple adjustment there. There's an option for a Q multiplier, an external speaker, uh, 2CQ, and a notch filter. That's an optional separate box, uh, which will help uh, bring in the signals a little better uh, uh, audio-wise. So that's another option. Up here you'll see two sockets uh, on the chassis. One is for the crystal oscillator, the 100 hertz calibrator I was telling you about. That plugs in there. You can see it's easy to get at. And this is the noise blanker option. And you'll see over here is an internal fuse. So that's where uh, the fuse is located. These jacks are for connecting an external transmitter. 
so that you can have control of muting your receiver when the transmitter is operating and you'll have a side tone here for the CW transmitter so you can hear that in your speaker uh, when you're transmitting code, Morse code, CW. And this is the antenna jack. Now on the side of the radio there is an optional crystal socket and a switch to switch to that. Anything, any frequency range that's not covered on the front of the radio you can cover between 3 and 30 megahertz using an optional crystal here if you wish. And then we have the headphone jack. So I hope you enjoyed this video of the Drake 2C receiver, an excellent receiver. It's a triple conversion receiver. It is uh, kind of a hybrid. It's uh, partially tubes and partially transistors. So uh, uh, it's just uh, Drake equipment, you know, it's hard to beat. So I, I, you can tell I'm partial to Drake, kind of. Uh, I have several uh, pieces of Drake equipment around here. But anyhow, thanks for watching and 7-3.